request you that we be seated. And as I earlier requested, the degree of respect on the scale to that effect of this event, it demands of us since we will be graced by the President of the Republic of Kenya, who is here. And uh, we be seated for the remaining individuals standing on the pathway that is the red carpet. We request that you take your seats, which are properly labeled. And any minute from now, we'll be having His Excellency the President and the Deputy President and kickstart our program. Mr. Wendori. Thank you, Ayub. Niope wakati ukifika. Bendi yetu ya Kenya Police Service Band. Pamoja na kwaya watatuongoza kuimba. Wimbo wa taifu wa jamhuri ya Kenya. Na wimbo wa jamhuri ya Afrika Mashariki. Delegates. Wimbo wa taifu wa Kenya. Wimbo wetu niombe sote na kwa sauti. Tuimbe kwa pamoja. Wakati huo ukifika. Kwaya. that you have made, that we may be here, dear Lord, 
as chairs of commerce and industries to discuss matters pertaining to commerce, trade in this country. We cannot make it without you guiding us in those matters. But even as we discuss those matters, we want to commit the country of Kenya into your able heart. The Lord, you will guide us. We are thankful for what you have done for us. And now we have a government in place that is taking shape and that it has taken over the country and we have enjoyed peace and tranquility. We don't take it for granted because it is you who have granted it to us. We therefore pray for our country, remembering the many challenges that we have, but also knowing that there are very many opportunities ahead of us. We do not want to dwell on the challenges we have, much as we petition you, the Lord, you may take us out of them, but we want to look for the opportunities ahead, take them, apply them, and use them to the glory of your name. And therefore, Lord, remember those who are famine stricken, those who are experiencing drought, those who are experiencing many other challenges. Meet them at their point of need. And all of us, Lord, we need you. We also remember the government headed by our president, His Excellency, William Samuel Ruto. Thank you for according him this, this opportunity even to be with us here and for the entire government. The Lord, this is the opportunity you are giving them. They need your direction, they need you to steer them so that they may lead the country that is expectant to higher heights of achievement. We have seen you do that to countries that worship you. We, we are one of the countries that believe and worship you. And we are sure that the future is very bright. When we yield unto you, you take us into the right place. Thank you even for the church and all other practitioners of other faith, because together, as we worship you in our different ways, you hear us and answer our prayers. And for this meeting, we invite your presence. The Lord, you guide us in all our deliberations, all those who are actively taking part, all those who are passing in the meeting. The Lord, at the end conclusion of this meeting, we shall be able to go back to our offices, to our places of work, saying, Lord, you are with us. So bless us as we proceed. This is our prayer, a prayer of faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. Your Excellency, sir, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Your Excellency, Dr. William Ruto, President of the Republic of Kenya and Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces. Your Excellency, the Deputy President, Honorable Brigadi Gashagua, the Chamber of President, Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Excellencies, Ambassadors and High Commissioners, Distinguished Delegates. Allow me, Your Excellency, sir, to invite the first Chamber Vice President, Dr. Eric Ruto, to make some brief welcoming remarks. Dr. Ruto Karikosan. And kindly, as we agree, we exercise self-restraint so that we are able to manage the program in good time. Dr. Ruto. Uh, thank you very much, Your Excellency, uh, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samai Ruto, uh, the Deputy President, Senior government leaders, uh, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce would like you to welcome you, Excellency Sam, in this 57th annual general meeting of Kenya National Chamber of Commerce, composed of 517 delegates, 11 from each county of the 47 chapters in Kenya, and 18 national elected directors. Your Excellency, sir, welcome. Uh, we have carefully selected hustlers in business. We have two sessions. The first session I'm going to moderate, and uh, we were looking at how we can be able to do import substitution in terms of the service industry, and I'd like to welcome three hustlers in business. Trevor Kimani, welcome. Adelie Chakimoy, and Eugene Bogo. Do a brief presentation of the potential of this country in terms of exporting our sources. Thank you.
Your Excellency Sam, the hustlers uh, in business, who are members of the chamber before you, uh, are going to give a brief experience in the businesses and opportunities they've been able to, cre uh, to create. The employers of both young and senior people. And I will immediately start with uh, uh, Trevor Kimani, who Trevor Kimani has developed a fintech technology that can be able to replace the leading uh, money transfer technologies in this world. So, Trevor, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya. Distinguished delegates, good morning. My name is Trevor Kimani, and I'm running a fintech called UPESI Money Transfer. I'm 31 years old and I've uh, been running the business for about six years now. And we're actually in six countries across Africa. Uh, our, role, our role is actually to empower the SME because what's happening across Africa is whenever you need to send money across borders, maybe paying for trade uh, transactions, you know, we're using other you know, international businesses which may charge about 35 to 45 dollars per transaction. Not only that, it takes about two to three days to finalize that transaction. But the person changes the narrative. What we're doing is charging about five to eight dollars, and the transaction is actually instant, so less than three minutes. And the goal is to make sure that we actually connect the whole of Africa, so that Africa can trade as one unit block and be able to, uh, you know, control the transactions and maintain the fund within our country. And of course. Being a Kenyan, we want to be Kenyan, the hub of Africa. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Your Excellency. This is what he wants to replace in terms of uh, the technologies providing. And we know these are some of the leading companies in the world. And we have a young man, uh, he's a member of Nairobi Chapter of the Chamber. Thank you. And I would like to welcome Magdali, who is providing technology behind uh, the tech part. Thank you. Welcome, Magdali. Thank you. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, distinguished delegates, my name is Chokiwa Matelin. I'm the founder and the executive director at Eldohub, an organization based in Eldoret, but also the leadership and the chairperson of the Association of Countrywide Innovation Hub, a network which brings together all innovation centers across the country. Your Excellency, I have, I'm, a, I'm a village girl, and you know, growing up in the village, I never imagined that one day I would be a software developer live alone starting and running an organization. And you know, everyone, you know, just like any other youth, you know, you come to Nairobi to look for opportunities. When you come to Nairobi, you know, there are so many opportunities that young people can access, something that is not possible back in the village. That is how our organization was born. And our was born to connect young people to job opportunities, at the same time also access employability skills. You know, Africa has a huge population of young people. And it is estimated that uh, by 2030, a quarter of the world's population under 25 will be coming from Africa. That means there is a huge potential to work from this, to leverage from these young people. And again, you know, Mr. President, so many tech companies are currently setting up in Kenya, driving the competition for tech talent, and also there is a shortage of tech talent. You know, and we have this huge population of young people. What do we do about it? We need to rethink uh, retention, development of tech talent in Kenya. Because there is a huge potential, um, uh, potential for young people unutilized, and yet these young people can actually deliver on great assignments um, for the world, especially for software developers. And uh, you know, we have tried these young people, and the success stories are amazing, and they're unique. You know, we've managed to train over 2,000 young people, and they don't need to have a university degree. We train them, yes. some of them have uh, just helped them. They've gone online and learned a certain skill. So we pick them and That's place good. them in organization, both locally and internationally. And currently we've managed to uh, support over 140 by placing them in both local and international uh, organization. And they've been able to deliver uh, over 100 uh, digital projects and 90% of them have gotten job employment both locally and internationally. Some of them have moved from earning zero to earning 100,000 and becoming software developers for international organizations such as Netflix. And they've also been able to support local businesses to increase their revenue because of digitization. 
And you all know you know, COVID-19 protocols you know, need to actually uh, work uh, to digitize their business processes. And Mr. President, our model is very sustainable. It is scalable and it is replicable. And actually we can support these young people to access these jobs uh, locally and internationally. And that's why we are asking the government to support us to reach a minimum of one million tech talent uh, in the next five years across Kenya. And uh, what do we need? We need resources such as you know, young people to be able to access computers, devices, and even access the national uh, data center. Because they know these young people can actually build uh, softwares for the world. And we do, they don't need now to come to Nairobi. They can actually work from anywhere across Kenya. Thank you. Uh, Your Excellency, this is real concert in practice. I know CONSA has been there for the last uh, 13 years as a concept, but this young lady has been able to develop what CONSA can be able to do. So we are asking as chamber that uh, if we can allocate resources to businesses like this so that they can have silicon savalis across our, vi our villages in Kenya. And uh, as I welcome Eugene, you know, business people are in the process of working wealth, and when they have made well, they need to be entertained. For myself, I preserve uh, health when you are wealthy. So Eugene is in the creative industry, he's been able to create jobs, and uh, welcome, Eugene. Thank you, Dr. Ruto. Um, Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of, the, of Kenya, uh, distinguished guests, uh, my name is Eugene Bugwa, and I run a company called DNR Studios. We make television shows, and we sell them to TV stations. We've been around for nine years now, and we produce television shows for almost all the major broadcasters in Kenya. And now for the first time, we're also exporting to other markets. And we've just gotten our first international production, which alone employs about 40 people. Uh, Your Excellency, at our, com at our company, I employ about 50 people on a full-time basis. And an additional 70 or so. <laughs> Thank you. And an additional 70 or so on a part-time basis. And you'll be happy to know, Your Excellency, that we are all contributing to our NSSF. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Your Excellency, uh, it's, uh, the G20 estimates that by the year um, 2030, that 10% of the world's GDP will be coming from the creative economy. And one of the things we are happiest about as, a, as an industry is that this government has already shown a lot of goodwill to our, to our sector. Uh, as of yesterday, a lot of the skill transfer that we get, even for the international production that I mentioned, is from South Africa. And so the, the, the measures yesterday are a great, great welcome for us. Uh, we are also very excited about the opportunity that the Hustler Fund will bring to our economy, and we are very keen to see how uh, the film fund will play in our sector. Um, Your Excellency, we have a few requests as well. Uh, we really, really, in the content space, one of the things that will really help our industry thrive is to have um, the media houses play more local content, because what this does is it, is it allows us to, to produce more work, and as we produce more work, we're able to hire more people, and we get better at it, which means we're able to export more. Uh, but as, just to start, we are very appreciative of the measures, but uh, I'm sure we want to engage more and ask for a few other measures. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Your Excellency. We want to request that uh, you allow the Chamber to organize a bottom. As the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, program is bottom up, you can see the Chamber is real. She's from Eldred. The two gentlemen are from the Nairobi chapters of the Chamber, and this can be replicated across the country. So. What we want to humbly request you is to allow Kenya National Chamber of Commerce, in partnership with your programs in Kenya Kwanzaa, to organize the bottom of the pyramid and get the four million SMEs into activities such as this. Thank you. Asante sana, Dr. Ruto. With the gracious permission of Your Excellency, I will now invite the Chamber President, Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mr. Richard Gatia. Buona Gatia, karibu sana. Your space. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, Your Excellency, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Rigadi Gachagua, Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Trade and Investment, Moses Kuria, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, 
Let me say today, I must say thank you very much for taking time, your busy schedules, to be with us here today and join His Excellency to listen and have a conversation with the Kenya National uh, Chamber of Commerce and Industry. I would also want to acknowledge the PCA Church and thank you very much for accommodating us uh, today. Governors uh, present, I want to really uh, appreciate you for taking time to be with us here today. I want to also acknowledge the board of directors uh, who are here with us. If you don't mind, you can just raise your hands from where you are or stand. Your Excellency, those are the board of directors. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I also want to recognize uh, the AGM uh, planning committee who have been with us for the last two weeks from wherever you are, feel appreciated. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, uh, it is important for me to introduce to you the National Governing Council of the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And uh, I would like them from wherever you are, you can just uh, stand up very quickly within very few uh, seconds. I can start with the coastal region. Wherever you are, coastal region, please stand up. You're there, thank you very, very much. Uh, if we can have a Rift Valley region, thank you very much. They have come all the way, all the night, the whole night they've been traveling, and thank you very much, Asante. Uh, we do have Nyanza, Nyanza region. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. We also do have Western region. Asante, Asante Sana, Lower Eastern. Lower Eastern, thank you very much. Upper Eastern. Asante, do we have uh, North Eastern? Thank you very, very much for coming. And of course, I'm sure we do have Nairobi. Nairobi region. Thank you, thank you very much. Have I left anyone? I think not. It is indeed. Central, Central, my goodness. I don't know. <laughs> Your Excellency, I don't know where I'm going to go over the weekend. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming. Asante, Asante Sana. Um, I also want to appreciate uh, our sponsors and partners who are here. There's APSA. APSA, you're here. Thank you very, very much. We do have DTB, who are our main sponsors. Thank you very much. Tima Sako, I'm sure you're here. Asante Sana and all other sponsors. We do have dignitaries, uh, the diplomatic corps, who are here with us, and we have 14 embassies with us, Your Excellency, who are really uh, supporting us in our course. Santeni Sana. It is indeed a great honor to speak before you this morning. Your Excellency, it is not worthy to say that aligning MSMEs with government policies, programs, and initiatives is the surest way to create seamlessness and mutually supportive engagement. With your permission, Your Excellency, allow me to submit to you that as CCI, we have already taken the lead on this. The last two years have taught us one thing, we must build sustainable and resilient businesses. Many small businesses closed during COVID-19 period and took to digital platforms as an alternative for doing business. In the wake of COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, the MasterCard Foundation, who are here with us, Your Excellency, launched its COVID-19 Recovery and Resilience Program to support businesses to MSMEs. Institutions, individuals, and communities respond to and withstand the impact of the pandemic while strengthening their resilience in the long run. In Kenya, Your Excellency, the MasterCard Foundation partnered with KNCCI, among other organizations, to provide targeted support to informal microenterprises that were particularly hard hit by the pandemic. 18,000 KNCCI members, majority women and youth entrepreneurs, received 535 million Kenya shillings collateral and interest-free micro loans, as well as digitally delivered training to sustain their businesses during this difficult period. We, 
delivered and were very successful in this project. Thank you, MasterCard. <laughs> Overall, the program created new digital channels to reach MSMEs and leveraged existing ones such as M-Pesa. It is estimated that COVID-19 Recovery and Resilience Program sustained nearly 43,000 jobs, of which 44% or 8,700 were held by young people and 84% or 16,500 by women. The loans disbursement officially ended in the year May, 2021 uh, in May. Your Excellency, as KNCCI, we are in partnership with various development partners who are here with us. For example, AMREF Italia, where we have supported women groups, training and capacity building women. We have partnered with um, uh, many other uh, uh, you know, development partners and institutions, financial institutions, Equity Bank, where we were able to train over 32,000 hustlers actually on financial literacy, and I want to thank Equity Bank uh, for that. APSA Bank, currently we are engaging uh, in actually uh, sensitizing women and capacity building them on how to approach business and, of course, market access and, uh, uh, and, and, and finance and how they can be able to uh, be prepared uh, on financial literacy. We believe technology can serve as a force for progress and therefore in support of your agenda on the digital uh, superhighway and the creative economy, we propose to support the advancement of science, technology, engineering, art, and math, STEM. As education and educators play a key role in Kenya's success, we feel a STEM for all agenda shall prepare us better for the dynamic changing nature of work. To close the digital divide, pathways to fast growing technology jobs should include non-traditional programs such as apprenticeships and innovative high school programs that combine academic study with career focused skills to prepare our workforce for the future of work. And Your Excellency, you, they have demonstrated the youth, the hustlers have demonstrated how well they can be able to approach the emerging markets and challenges and opportunities that are available in the, this African continental free trade area. It is in this regard, in partnership with Trademark East Africa, we have built a digital platform for our members. Additionally, we have embarked on a, a partnership with Google Kenya to digitize and map 4 million MSMEs or hustlers across the country. A partnership, thank you very much, a partnership with International Chamber of Commerce and UNECA will see us establish a center of entrepreneurship, Your Excellency, which seeks to digitize, digitalize 750,000 MSMEs across the Great Lakes region over a period of three years in East and Central Africa as well with Kenya as the hub. And thank you to International Chamber of Commerce and Industry. The social market economy concept promoted free market capitalism while allowing government involvement in creating social policies aims at maintaining the mechanisms of the free market while ensuring social equity by keeping a balance between a high rate of economic growth, low inflation, low levels of unemployment, good working conditions, social welfare and public services using state interventions as well. Your Excellency, we have a youthful population with high expectations of the current and future leadership looking to their leaders to spearhead them to opportunities where they can earn a decent wage and enjoy a decent living. We will remain a committed, humble, and partner to ensure the Kenya Kwanzaa Hustler Agenda resonates across all our county chambers and drives the economy to a nation forward. <laughs> Your Excellency, I want to really thank you for taking time to be with us. I can attest to it that in the last uh, four years during my time, we have not sat 
with the government of the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And we really thank you for coming to listen to us and taking time to have a conversation with our members, potential members and potential partners, development partners as well. Your Excellency, I want to stop there for now, but I really want to thank everyone for being very patient. Asante and God bless you. Allow me to invite just a few speakers um, who we had prepared to uh, share with you their achievements and also the partnership with us and how they will be able to reorganize and re-engineer themselves so that they can be able to partner with the Kenya Kwanzaa uh, administration. I want to call upon Equity Bank, MD Gerald, if you're here. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Ruto, the Deputy President, Cabinet Secretary is present, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, the equity journey with the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce started back in 2019. And within the last three years, we have achieved uh, quite a, a number of milestones. And I want to share with you some of the milestones that we have created with this uh, partnership, because so far, we've been able to train, and I think uh, the President have mentioned, that 2,000 members of the Chamber of Commerce, where we have given them financial literacy, capacity building, so as to ensure that they manage their businesses in a professional way. Out of the 2,000 members, 28,812 are banking with us, and out of the 28,000, 6,630 have taken loans. And these loans, are equivalent to 4.8 billion shillings, which they have invested in their businesses. Your Excellency, we also continue to create market linkages and also support the businesses through trade missions. And in particular, I want to mention last week, we did have 10 US investors who came and interacted with some of the members and uh, we are happy the Shaba of Commerce president had the opportunity to speak to the members, and mostly these are the SME uh, customers. Other than that, last year, Your Excellency, we managed to take uh, a delegation of 300 businesses uh, from Kenya to DRC. And uh, out of this uh, exposure visit, a number of them were able to establish business opportunities in DRC. And this is where our businesses will be able to, to do business in DRC, and also DRC were able to identify some of the opportunities. We have lined up quite a number of trade missions, locally, regionally, and also internationally. And we believe this is going to really impact heavily on the SME sector. Your Excellency, after the COVID, we as an equity bank, we came together and we asked ourselves, what is it that we need to do? And we came up with the Marshall Plan. And in this Marshall Plan is actually cutting across all the regions we are operating in, and I believe Kenya is going to be the biggest beneficiary. We have set aside seven billion US dollars, equivalent to almost 840 billion Kenya shillings, uh, to support the businesses. And out of that, the impact we are projecting is that it's going to create five million businesses across the region, and every business we are projecting is going to create uh, another five individual 
businesses that are going to, to benefit individuals. So in total, about 25 million businesses are going to, uh, to benefit. Out of that, Your Excellency, we are also projecting that uh, 50 million jobs will be created across the region. And I believe this is going to have a, a big Im impact. We as Equity Bank are really uh, very focused to support uh, SME because we believe SME are the greatest drivers of our economy. Again, Your Excellency, we have products specifically for the SME. We have working capital uh, solutions. We have trade finance solutions. We have CapEx solution uh, to take care of our customers. So I'm extending an invitation to all the SME customers to reach out to uh, our branches so that uh, we can be able to support them financially. Your Excellency, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gerald. I just want to ask the next speakers to observe time. His Excellency has humbly requested we spend with him one and a half hours, and we have taken a long time already. So I'll ask you to spend not more than two minutes. I want to call the uh, manager of Trademark East Africa. Uh, this is Ahmed Farah, who again, I said, are great, great partners and they have been able to provide us with a platform where we can be able to reach out to everyone digitally. And also the certificates of origin that we issue to the exporters, they have been able to support us with the platform and that digital system. Thank you. Thank you, Buenangatia. Uh, the chief guest is Excellency Dr. William Ruto, uh, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces of the Republic of Kenya. Uh, the Deputy President, Regathu Gashago, Honorable Cabinet Secretary, Trade Investments and Industry, uh, Bwana Moses Kuria, uh, Honorable Permanent Secretaries, President, Leadership, and the Board of the Chambers, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, good morning. It really indeed is an honor and a great privilege for me to be here today. 12 years ago, with the support of the government of Kenya, our development partners and implementing partners, Trademark East Africa embarked on a mission to promote prosperity through trade in the region. We have, over the years, delivered programs in Kenya and across Eastern Horn of Africa that reduce time and cost of, trade, of trading and improve business environment for private sector to thrive and support businesses to actively participate in trade to improve their livelihoods. Your Excellency, our Kenya program, the largest in Trademark East Africa, is strategic because we recognize that Kenya is a major gateway to East Africa and a regional hub for trade, finance, communication, and transportation services. In the last 12 years, Your Excellency, Trademark East Africa has made some considerable contribution to trade in Kenya and the region. Allow me to enumerate some of those achievements, sir. We invested in the Kenya Ports Authority to increase the capacity and improve efficiency of operations at the Port of Mombasa. We also invested in construction of access roads to and from the Port of Mombasa, port, ex port gate expansions, bath upgrades, and uh, supply of mobile harbor cranes and eco hoppers. We supported, as you're aware, Your Excellency, the construction and operationalization of one-stop border posts at Busia and Taveta to reduce the time taken to cross the borders. We also supported operationalization of Moyale border posts through the investments in the integrated border management process. Your Excellency, Your Excellency, we will be delighted to partner with you and your administration and the East Africa Partner States to realize your vision of no-stop borders with our neighboring countries. To increase the efficiency of custom processes at KRA, we worked with KRA to, impl to implement the integrated customs management system. Also, through implementation of the single window information trade system uh, portals, we supported automation of import and export processes for various government ministries and agencies. This greatly reduced transaction costs and time for businesses. Your, Ex Your Excellency, we will continue working closely with the administration, the private sector, and civil societies to advocate and initiate programs that will enhan enhance countries' business environments, competitiveness to promote export-led uh, economic growth. 
On our forward look through our export readiness training, training program, we are targeting MSMEs to help them deliver marketable products on a global scale at competitive prices. Awareness raising initiatives will be undertaken on the benefits of exporting and to provide a general understanding of exporting as a means of inter interesting more farms to export. Cognizance of this and towards my conclusion, the key focus of this meeting, which is the Chamber uh, AGM, I would like to appreciate some milestones the partnership between Trademark East Africa and the Chamber has yielded over the years. From 2015 to 2021, we supported the Chamber technically and financially to develop an online web portal management information system aimed at improving the management and administration of certificates of origin and managing Chamber membership. The system was rolled out in 2015 and has been operational since then. Also, Trademark East Africa and the Chamber embarked on a second phase of that aimed at enhancing system functionalities to further enhance efficiency in the operations of the Chamber by adopting more affordable, simplified, and accessible technologies through mobile enhancement. This phase placed emphasis on rolling out automated services to county chambers, thereby reaching out to more members and traders, uh, trading communities in Kenya. Your Excellency, this demonstrates Trademark's uh, commitment to supporting activities that will power trade not only in Kenya, but across the region. Allow me, allow me to take this opportunity to pledge our continued support to the government of Kenya, East Africa uh, Community Partner States, and the Africa Continental Free Trade Area to facilitate projects that will enhan enhance trade, improve the business environment, and enhance business competitiveness in Kenya, the ESC, and Africa at large. Thank you very much. You. I now would like to take the opportunity to invite Absa Bank Kenya CEO Yusuf Lemar. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, our President, Dr. William Samoy Ruto. Uh, Your Excellency, the Deputy President, Rigadi Gashagwa. All protocols observed. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I think uh, I must start by congratulating Your Excellency. Yesterday was a moment of so much joy to all of us as a country, ourselves when we were at KCC, to listen to your speed of execution, something that has been troubling this community in terms of business with South Africa, in one minute, in one summary, you know, of all the achievements that you did yesterday, uh, removal of the visa to South Africa. <laughs> Amazing. Well done. Removal of all those trade barriers. I can imagine yourself with the team last night at State House, moving with speed and executing and removing the trade barrier. That is amazing for me. So I start by saying thank you. This business community, there's nothing else we need apart from just creating that environment where business can be able to thrive. From ABSA, we have gone around the country recently to 10 counties. We've met so many people, the delegates that you've seen here. We've listened to the SMEs. We've seen what are the big challenges that you're facing, and we are responding. We are going to support you together with what the government is doing. We are coming to you to say we can be able to give you unsecured lending to the tune of 10 million shillings. We are coming to you and saying for the business to be able to thrive, LPO financing, invoice discounting to the tune of 50 million shillings. And we are coming to you, especially the ladies, knowing the challenges that you are having, creating a kitty of about 50 billion shillings to be able to support your business, uh, making sure that we can be able to give you opportunities to markets, information in, in basic things like bookkeeping, and also giving you coaches, mentors, that can be able to make sure that your business is, is thriving. We went to the counties and met quite a number of governors. And the governors told us, in, in support of the president's Hustler Fund, which is about 50 billion shillings, 
which the president has promised by around December, you'll be able to come and make some announcements on it. The governors themselves, they've created their own revolving fund. And they've asked us, can you be able to help us in terms of managing the revolving fund and be able to see what you can be able to do from an ABSA perspective? We've moved on, we've committed. Whatever revolving fund that the, the different counties are going to come up with, we're going to match that and be able to make sure that this gets to the allocated uh, you know, uh, SMEs. Mine is brief, Your Excellency. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, together with, I'm sure, the entire nation. We always say, if you create a good environment for the business, the private sector is going to thrive, the public sector is going to thrive, the economy is definitely going to thrive as well. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. We also have a representative in uh, refrigerated houses and aggregated centers to power, export, and manufacturing. If you're here, please make your way. Are you here? Please raise your hand so that I can see you. Okay, I'll straight away go to our main sponsor, who is Diamond Trust Bank Group CEO, Nassim Devji. Please come and uh, share with us uh, issues on financial. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, dignitaries present, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. On behalf of the board, management, and staff of Diamond Trust Bank, I'm pleased to join you all here this morning, and I would like to thank the KNCCI for giving us this opportunity to be together. At DTB, we have a great appreciation of the business community in Kenya, specifically the micro, small, and medium enterprises. Our commitment is to support Kenyan micro, small, medium enterprises to advance and to ensure that the ordinary Mwananchi can readily reach, reach us for any of their financial needs. Your Excellency, we have a special focus on women and the youth as underrepresented segments in business. In line with this, we recently unveiled the DTB Zawadi Savings Account, a savings product specifically targeted towards women-owned and led businesses and groups, encouraging saving and earning interest. We have partnered with the Rose Women's Foundation to roll out an income-generating and capacity-building program for women in Kenya's low-income settlements. In the markets, we have launched DTB Sokoni, a lending program for traders up to Kenya shillings 200,000. Each trader receives a free payment till and gains access to loans based on their discipline and collection of funds and record keeping. As we move further into the digital age, Many of our youth-owned businesses prefer to interact completely digitally. As such, we are developing Infinity, a phone banking application product that will equip micro, small, and medium enterprise owners with all the tools they need to run their business, both on the street and online. Your Excellency, one of the key factors that limits micro, small, and medium enterprises growth is a lack of financial literacy and access to services. In response, we have a financial literacy training program that builds the capacity across all areas of business. To ensure easy access to finance, we're expanding our physical presence and we'll, and we'll add 40 branches to our network by the end of 2023. 
Ultimately, our expansion efforts are driven by our determination to be the bank that walks the journey with micro and small businesses, women and the youth, from one level to the next, as these businesses have a direct impact in the community, households, and livelihoods of Kenyans. In conclusion, I want to reassure you that the Hustler Nation can bank with DTB and bank on DTB for support at all levels of personal and business growth. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, DTB. We have a representative uh, on services, Mr. Omari, are you here? Mr. Omari? All right, okay, we'll go now to the next session, which I will leave now to the protocol team. Uh, thank you. I wish to most humbly request the Chamber President to present patron certificate to His Excellency the President. May I most kindly invite Your Excellency to receive the patron certificate from the Chamber President. And there we have it, His Excellency the President being, being presented, presented with the patron certificate as the patron of the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Your Excellency, thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Karibu, I invite Your Excellencies to take our seats. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you. And now, congratulatory messages. We briefly watch the screens for congratulatory messages. On behalf of the Commerce and its Center Secretary, we'd like to congratulate His Excellency William Roto, the President of Kenya, for becoming the new patron of the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. We've been working very closely with the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry to deliver the ICC Centers of Entrepreneurship based in Nairobi, not only for the Kenyan business, but also for the East African businesses. We want to make sure that Kenya is leading the way on bringing more foreign investment for the region and also preparing the SMEs, the small business in the region, to take full advantage of the African Free Trade Continental Area, which is one of the largest trade agreements in the planet. We're very confident that through the partnerships between the public and the private sector, we can deliver uh, not only uh, the best environment for business in the region, but also make sure that we will prepare the next generation of entrepreneurs, especially the cross-board entrepreneurs that will make uh, full advantage uh, of uh, the new policies and the trade integration in the region. So I'm very happy to be here and thank you so much for this opportunity with many thanks to the leadership of the Kenyan National Chamber of Commerce in the industry, President Richard Ngatia, and also uh, everyone who's been working to deliver the ICC Centers of Entrepreneurship in the region. Thank you so much. Greetings, everyone. I am Julian Kassam, the director of the ICC World Chambers Federation, speaking from our global headquarters in Paris. On behalf of Nicolas Uribe, Chair of the ICC World Chambers Federation, I would like to convey the hearty congratulations from WCF to the Kenyan National Chamber of Commerce and Industry on the occasion of its annual general meeting and the confirmance of its incoming patron president, William Ruto. We're proud of the progress made by the KNCCI as a premier chamber in Africa and the incredible job they have done in advocacy, economic diplomacy and SME support. The participation of KNCCI in the activities of the International Chamber of Commerce and its World Feder Chambers Federation is going from strength to strength, and we're proud to count you as one of our distinguished members. Our best regards go to KNCCI President Mich Mr. Richard Ngatia, past President Kiprono Kitoni, 
and Virginia Roringi from the KNCCI team. May you have success in the years to come, and you can count on the support of the ICC World Chambers Federation. Thank you very much. Congratulations again, Your Excellency Tumpongeze Kwama Kofi, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. If you allow me, Your Excellency, I will invite Terry Ann Chebet for a very quick interactive session. Mary Terry Ann, kindly. Your, Le Your Excellency says, Kenya has an estimated overall small business count of just over 10 million businesses, and that's depending on the data that you choose to decide on, with about 200 businesses registered daily in the year 2020. And as you will recall, that was when the height of COVID was. That says a lot about our collective entrepreneurial spirit as a people, our people's passion for business, and the opportunities they see within the business environment. The hustlers here, Your Excellency, are all looking forward to the 50 billion shilling hustler fund, which you have mentioned will kick off on the 1st of December. And we know that you are a man of your word. From the, from the earlier presentations, you can see that these hustlers, Your Excellency, are not begging for free money. They only want cheaper and more accessible credit. This session will be an interactive session with your fellow hustlers, Your Excellency. They want to share with you their dreams for their businesses and how your government can catapult their business and impact even more. I'd like to welcome up on stage the President uh, for Chamber, Mr. Richard Ngatia, who will be joining us uh, to help coordinate this uh, particular session. And our hustlers today joining us on stage, uh, Mr. Elmik Dad Hassan, who is an agricultural value chain exporter. We have engineer Charles Kalomba. Please quickly make your way up on stage, uh, who is representing the Juakali sector, and Ms. Esther Mwendwa, who is a hustler manufacturer. And of course, Your Excellency, you are also an entrepreneur. We've had your stories about starting your business many years ago. We would love you um, to join us up on stage, Your Excellency, President Ruto. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. I'd like to start by um, asking the younger hustlers represented up on stage to begin by sharing a little bit about your story for His Excellency to understand. His Excellency. May we kindly get a microphone? Better music, my. His Excellency, President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, distinguished guests and gentlemen, and all protocols observed, good morning. morning. My name is uh, El Mikdad Hassan Nandwa. I run Fawaki Import and Export uh, Limited. I'm just a 23-year-old agripreneur, and, uh, and uh, we do export of fresh, fruits on, of fresh fruits and vegetables from Kenya to the world. We export uh, avocados, mangoes, and pineapples, and uh, every other fruit which we are able to export and license uh, to do so. At the moment, we employ more than uh, 50 workers and we work with more than uh, 20 farmers, both uh, large scale and uh, small scale. Right now, we are doing 196 tons uh, monthly, and uh, we can also, we have orders uh, for more than 600 tons monthly, 
but uh, due to challenges uh, young hustlers like me face, we are unable to meet uh, the orders because of things to do with uh, finance. Basically, for us to be able to do that, we need a big amount of money, which is around 70 million, of which a young hustler like me, it's difficult uh, to get such an, uh, such an amount. Basically, uh, for us to start uh, this business, we wanted to do something that we are able to also earn from, but at the same time, to also help our economy grow, whereby we believe that uh, in exports, we bring money to our country, whereby we are also able uh, to help the population, whereby you can see the families that we are able to feed, the farmers that we are able, uh, we are able uh, to support. At the same time, there are some challenges that we also face as exporters, which of recent is the case, is the case that uh, exporters lost in, uh, in court, whereby uh, the levy that uh, we pay was uh, increased from uh, 30 cents per kg, and right at the moment uh, we are paying 0.25% uh, of the invoice value, which is uh, kind of expensive uh, for us, basically because uh, the 30 cents uh, per kg that we used to pay, we used to pay it uh, quarterly, but at the moment now the 0.25%, uh, we have to pay it in, uh, in advance which uh, is almost uh, 12,000. So for example, if, uh, if a young entrepreneur wants to start working and doesn't have the money, it's difficult for him to be able uh, to access the market and to be able to export. Another thing is the delayed uh, VAT, delayed VAT refunds, whereby uh, we believe as exporters we are, supposed to be, uh, we are supposed to be supported by the government, whereby if we can have a system whereby we can get refunded our VAT faster or even uh, immediately as other countries do it, will be able to increase the volumes that we do because with that VAT refund, we're able now to increase the volumes that uh, we do and do our work as, uh, as expected. Another challenge uh, basically in the international markets is non-payment uh, from clients, whereby uh, you export uh, to a client, but basically they don't do according to your agreement. And because the consignment is in another, in another, in another country, when you, when you even go to the other country to open a case, you lose it uh, because basically they'll favor their national. So we have to do something about that. Maybe you can put a, uh, we, we can put a restriction, basically all Kenyan produce of a certain type goes at a certain price, and for one to export, maybe they have to do it at a, do you have to show that you've been paid already, which will compel even all the importers to work on the same one. We'll, uh, we as Kenyans will not lose money on the, in the market. Thank you, Hassan. We can stop it for there now, and then we'll come back all to right. you, uh, you in a moment. <laughs> I would like to hear a little bit more from the others, and when we will also um, engage in a little bit more uh, detail once we have the introduction from the other panelists. Um, Wendua, let's come to you. Please, please introduce your business to us. Uh, your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Deputy President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. My name is Esther Ndenya, and I am in the manufacturing sector, uh, food production value addition. I work for a company called NTH Limited, and mine is a story of a hobby turned into a business venture out of adversity. From the fashion industry, wearing high heels, to the manufacturing sector, wearing gumboots now. I lost a business that I had built for 15 years during the COVID pandemic, and that's how I found myself in the manufacturing sector. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mwenda. Kindly. Of Kenya. Uh, Excellency David President, all protocols observed. Uh, my name is Engineer Charles Kalomba. Your Excellency, uh, I'm here to talk about the story of Jokali, which is uh, you've been uh, really a supporter of Jokali for a very good time. Your Excellency, the Jokali sector was established in this country way back in 1986. Uh, Your Excellency, this is the only sector that uh, really have been named in the Bible, in the book of Exodus, that one I know you are a staunch Christian, and you've read the Bible severally. So if you read Exodus 31, from verse 1 to 10, you'll see that this is a sector that God gave skills, and he gave the spirit, and he gave the knowledge, and he gave the understanding. So when the Bible says in Hosea chapter 6, uh, 4, 5, verse 6, that people perish because they lack knowledge, there's only one sector that doesn't perish, because, <laughs> because they have the knowledge. And where is this knowledge coming from? That um, Jokali, uh, uh, everybody in this country who has been to school, Your Excellency, I don't know whether you did it, you went to school with a box, and it's a Jokali box, it's a metal box. And this metal box has remained for my children and for my grandchildren. 
and it is only coming from Jokali, Your Excellency. So this is a sector that has survived in this economy for a very long time, and when uh, the President Moi uh, discovered this se uh, sector, when we took him to India, he saw what is happening in India, Your Excellency. We came and we are running so many things in this country with Jokali. Uh, Your Excellency, we have some challenges that we are facing in the Jokali sector. And of course, uh, when you came to Bombers of Kenya, Your Excellency, in 2014, uh, we, we were honored by you to come to be the chief guest because we are going to be very ashamed because uh, a conference that we initiated to bring all the governors together. And one of the things that we were doing, this sector cuts across the entire economy. So when you look up at agriculture, look at energy, look at everywhere, like building, uh, we have uh, a lot of things that we are doing, Your Excellency. Today, we had requested that we shall play uh, uh, one of the images where we have done a hustler tractor. We have produced a hustler tractor, which is a con uh, cannibalized car. It's just a car that has been cannibalized into a tractor to release the oxen from the farm to go and do other assignments. Because it is only in Africa wow. where commercial, commercialization of agriculture <laughs> is uh, through an oxen. So this tractor that we shall present to you as an image, you will see it is a tractor that will do 10 functions. And we are happy, Your Excellency, you are talking about how do we run away from fossil fuel. This tractor will be a solution to that because it's going to use biofuel, which the farmer can farm for energy in the tractor. So I think uh, for us, because uh, she's a person time, I can speak and speak and speak, I know uh, you, you know that, but we need to limit time because of your busy schedule. So I think uh, if the tractor will be ready, you will see it. And then, uh, of course, from uh, what you have a lot of scrap vehicles in this country. You have millions of scraps. Uh, and if th this is going to be your donation as a father of this sector, you will say, take these vehicles, give me tractors, and the counties can enjoy tractors, and they can produce more. And of course, the many functions that this tractor will do, uh, we shall produce. At the end of the day, Your Excellency shall be presenting to you a few other projects, which are presidential, presidential projects that are incomplete. And yet, there is a very huge demand for some commodities from this country to international market because of those projects. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kalumba. President Gatia? Thank you. Thank you very much, Ngatia. And it is a, a huge privilege for me to be in this panel and more importantly to be in this session with the Chamber. I, uh, I want to say a couple of things uh, by way of uh, introduction. I am a great believer in the Chamber of Commerce. Um, when a few years ago I came across Kiprono Kitony, he knows because he's here, I encouraged him to be part of the chamber because I saw the way the chamber was going, it had become a hostage of people who did not have the capacity to run a proper chamber of commerce. I am happy that today we have a chamber of commerce that we can say is fit for purpose and working with the government, with all the sectors, to project the right image of our country. I want to say congratulations to the chamber. You are doing a good job. Secondly, I agree with you 100% that the chamber can work with the government to organize the bottle. And what I have seen this morning is actually a testimony and a confirmation that indeed, with the chamber, we can leverage on your network to be able to organize the bottom of the pyramid to get the many innovators, the many creators, the many entrepreneurs, the majority of the four million um, micro enterprises to get to a level where they can help us create jobs and they can help us create wealth. Um, I have listened very carefully to Magdalene, to Trevor who spoke earlier, 
to Eugene, who spoke earlier, and they present and they represent our future. The one asset that we have in Kenya, a very rare asset, is our human capital. We may not have gold, we may not have silver and all the other things, but we have the people of Kenya, and that is the asset that we have. And that is the asset that is going to turn around uh, our nation. And I am happy that we are working together to sharpen, to model, and to shape the human capital that we have through training, through education, and I am very confident that going into the future from all our um, uh, learning institution, training institutions, we should be able to build the human capital that is going to make the difference in our country. That is already it is making. That's one asset. The other asset, apart from sharpening that asset through education and training, we need to fund. You know, and I am very happy that we are having a conversation and even listening to my great exporter here, the constraint that has been around our human capital and especially our micro and medium enterprises has been the concept of financing, affordable financing. I have listened to the banks who spoke to us here, great people from equity to APSA to um, DTP here. I really want to persuade our financial institutions, yes, to be flexible in how they lend their finances, but also to consider the aspect of cost. What is the cost of that financing? I would have been very happy to hear Equity Bank say, we're going to lend to SMEs on a single digit interest rate. <laughs> and I really want to challenge our financial institutions with tremendous respect that it is possible and it is time that we inspired our micro and small enterprises by ensuring they have access to affordable credit. The government of Kenya is going to work with you as we fashion the Hustler Fund. I want to promise the country that the Hustler Fund is going to be on a single digit uh, interest rate and progressively, progressively for the smaller enterprises, uh, we will begin with just a simple fee without interest, because we want, to, we want to fire the bottom of the pyramid. That is where the engine of our economy is. The other uh, item, listening to all these people, apart from finance, is technology. We must leverage on technology to be able to be efficient and effective. And that is why if you see our manifesto, we talked largely about SMEs, because we know that's where the jewel is. And secondly, we talked about affordable finance. And thirdly, we talked about a superhighway, because technology, listening to Magdalene, I am very confident that employment is going to be ready and available if we can ensure that we spread technology, we have financing, and that is why we talked about the superhighway. The superhighway is supposed to do two things, to make sure that the country is connected, and I'm happy again to announce here that the real last mile in technology is the gadget. And already we are working with our tel telcos, our telecommunication uh, 
uh, sector so that we can have a smartphone that is going to be less than 5,000 shillings. A smartphone that can do everything that you want. A smartphone that can make sure today the cheapest smartphone is 10,000, maybe 15,000. We want to see whether we can get it to 30 or 40 dollars. And I want to promise the country that in the next eight to 12 months, we will have the cheapest smartphone in Africa, manufactured in Kenya. And finally, <clears throat> the concept of the superhighway is to also make it cost effective to be, to trade on, on and, and, and to work on, uh, on, on, on the digital space. And again, let me use this forum to say we have about 15% of government services on the digital platform. If you look at our manifesto, we said we are going to move 80% of, of all government services on the digital platform. Again, let me announce here that we are working on it. And by God's grace, between six and 12 months, we will have moved 90% of all government services onto the digital platform and ensure that from the comfort of your home, you can work with the government. You can get your licenses. You can get every government service online without having to travel to any office, without having to go to any park. And again, to use the digital platform to also collect our taxes. So uh, good people listening to each and every one of you here, the government of Kenya stands ready and available to work with you. And I have heard uh, what my good brother here has said. Uh, I thought I have done a long introduction. Let me just say, speak, answer your question. Yes. <laughs> um, on the matter of climate, climate change, and, and that's why we are saying technology is going to give us the opportunity to be able to deal with matters climate change. I'm going to encourage my brother from the Juakali that we are going to look at them, not just doing this, the, 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 the tractor that uses renewable energy, we also want to see whether we can move all our um, border border guys onto uh, a, a clean energy platform. There is absolutely no reason why we should not begin to walk the journey to e-mobility. All our vehicles, all our um, border border guys should be on e-mobility. We should be able to convert all the border borders we have so that they are electric and they can use renewable energy, solar, we can, they can use wind energy to be able to charge and we can progressively eliminate fossil fuels. And that is wha how the Juakali Texa is going to come on board. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Maybe I just go back to Mr. Kalomba. Um, maybe you can just explain briefly how the Juakali would be able to work with the sector of energy. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, the Jokali has always been very ready uh, from birth, and uh, uh, we, we know very well uh, we prayed, and God brought us a person who thinks like us. Mm. And uh, in energy, we have some projects, very simple projects that we have done across the country, mm -hmm. and we have piloted in five counties, and these are called community power centers, mm -hmm. where energy, wind, biogas, generation, co-generation is working together with solar and biofuel with uh, battery banks for productive use in those centers with a digital village where the youth can go and join the rest of the world to do certain things and we've done it in Nandi in uh, Himaki in Akapturwai we've done it in Bomet in uh, Kitoben, we have done it in Siaya in a place called Uhuru we have done it in uh, Changara in Busia and the last one we've done in Ngando in Kirinyaga. And there are models. 
But the problem has been as we do them as models, because there are several other things that we can talk about models that you have done. The lack of political goodwill, because uh, it's a country that we have come up with a benchmark of finish politics, start politics immediately. But development delays. So I think for us, because of the uh, huge knowledge that we have uh, acquired from God himself, we are supporting some institutions. But the challenge we are having is, that, like, for example, uh, when the sector pushed for ban of importation of furniture for public office, we came up with a project on bamboo. So I think we shall be talking about how we can make furniture locally using bamboo because of conversion. And I think uh, on energy, we are doing a lot of uh, briquetting from waste. We are doing a lot of biogas generation. Like, for example, if you go to Naivasha, you will find your excellency. There is a, a team that was having 100, 100 ton of waste of baby corn and cabbage uh, as waste. Today, they are producing biogas, and you can package the biogas to use on automotive. So as we talk about uh, 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 the issues of uh, clean energy and all these things, we need to go that route. And Joakal is leading the way. Uh, one of the challenges we are having and we want to unlock is institutional syner synergy. Because there are so many institutions in Kenya, especially the agencies of the government, that uh, listen, they get agitated, they don't want even to involve the Juakali into their system. So you find even their boards, they lack representation of Juakali. Then the common manufacturing facility, which we have been pursuing the chamber to support us, where quality is supposed to be a measure for a Juakali product. When you talk about a wheelbarrow, the whole of East Africa is buying wheelbarrows from Kenya. The whole of uh, all the jikos, and I'm told if you have a, a kitchen without a Jokali jiko, it's not a complete kitchen. Uh, yes, so, uh, so all the jikos are made in Kenya. But the quality and the finish. Your Excellency, I know you'll be with us in Kampala, and uh, Excellency, the Deputy President may be with us in Kampala again. We are having a regional exhibition, and Jokali in Kenya is leading the whole region. And the chairman of uh, Musea is here, Bwana uh, uh, you know, Mureu, and he's the chairman of Musea, who is supposed to be leading the process in Kampala. So I think we are leading the region, and we want the region to really uh, benefit from us. So in Thank you very much, Victorian. Perhaps a final question, Your Excellency. Um, yesterday you talked very passionately about Kenyans accessing the South African market. Um, your Minister for Trade uh, talked about the fact that it is smaller businesses that are doing the majority of exports, mm. uh, meaning that, which explains why we are only exporting uh, products worth about 38 million US dollars, yet they are exporting import, I mean, they're sending products here worth 650 million US dollars. What word do you have for the business people that are here today, uh, both from the small business sector and the medium sector? Let me first speak to the issue raised by Juakali. You talked about political goodwill. So, me sitting here, I am a bundle of political goodwill. <laughs> so, at least, at least one issue is out of the way. The second issue is the common user facility which you have talked about. And you are so right. Uh, when, you, when, we were, when we are doing the housing, for example, we said we are going to connect our Juakali sector to our Tibet institutions because in Tibet we have a lot of equipment. We spend almost 25, 30 billion shillings to equip our Tibets. And we are now saying there must be a working formula between the Juakali and our Tibets so that the Juakali can leverage on the huge resources and uh, equipment that we have in our Juakali to professionalize their work. But if you look at our manifesto, we have said that we are going to work with the Juakali, link them up to our Tibet institutions, and create a common user facility where we have the most modern of equipments to be shared by different people in the Juakali sector so that we can elevate the quality and the specifications of the products that they produce. So you are spot on, and I want to confirm to you that is a plan we intend to implement. And it's going to cover the textile sector, the leather sector, the wood sector, the metal sector. All those sectors will be covered in our common user facility that we are going to equip, either in every county to begin with, then we will move to the sub-county, and then we will move to the Juakali sheds, which can be shared by different Juakali um, 
players because so that because it's expensive for one person to buy. But once we put a common user facility under the management of the Juakali, they can share in, in the common user facility for all uh, the equipment that they need to be able to elevate the quality of their products to the correct level. Um, on the item that was mentioned by Terry Ann, yesterday, we not only unlocked matters to do with travel, we also unlocked and eliminated barriers. Number one, we've had a 10-year ban on our meat products accessing the South African market. We have committed ourselves, and yesterday in the evening we got a brief from the ministers concerned, but by December this year, the ban will be lifted so that our products can access the South African market. We cannot sell our tea to South Africa. We have a challenge selling our pineapples. We have a challenge selling our avocados, as was mentioned by uh, this young man. The issue was that we are operating on different phytosanitary um, requirements. We have said we are going to harmonize our phytosanitary uh, regulations so that by January, we can be able to access the South African market as they access our market. That way, we can begin to bring down the difference in um, uh, the trade levels between our two countries. As was said, they are selling to our country 650 million US dollars. We are selling only 40 million uh, dollars to the South African market. And yet, the primary or the premium products that we'll be selling to South Africa have barriers. One of them is tea, and I persuaded the president of South Africa that by January, February next year, we should be able to export our tea to South Africa. And I do that for all the other countries, including our neighbors, and I want to persuade all of us here, whether you are in FinTech, whether you are in agro-processing, whether you are in the Jogali sector, we must focus our market beyond Kenya. And that is why we should leverage on the East African, uh, com uh, East African community, and more importantly, we should leverage on the infrastructure given to us by the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. Africa, ladies and gentlemen, is our market for our tea, for our coffee, for our milk, for our fintech, for all the products that we produce, we must raise our horizon to the 1.2 billion people in the African continent. And we must target the 2.7 trillion um, GDP and make some of it Kenyan GDP. And I am ready, I am willing, and the government of Kenya is going to work with each and every one of you in your sectors so that we can scale up I like the words of Magdalene. She said, high enterprise is scalable and high enterprise can be expanded. You know, I, I, I really like that. And, and that should be the mindset that we have as Kenyans. Thank you, sir. Thank you very, very much, uh, Your Excellency. Uh, I would want to go straight to Esther. And uh, you've listened to His Excellency and uh, he's demonstrated on how uh, his government will facilitate the private sector. Uh, in your view, Esther, what would you want the government or the private sector to do, particularly in value chain and uh, the agro-processing, in terms of sustainability? Um, first, Your Excellency, as you know, the manufacturing is, is quite capital intensive to set a manufacturing plant here. And um, it's also a challenge for the uh, for, for, for the ASLAs to be able to access financing. I'm calling myself an ASLA manufacturer because I got into manufacturing food production with no um, food technology, you know, knowledge at all. I am a product of the Kenya Industrial Research Institute. First, some of the challenges that we have is um, malt um, licensing. 
we have to pay so many licenses to be able to set up, uh, plus their fees. At least you need 400,000 to be able to set up a factory in Kenya. I don't know how many um, startups will be able to afford that. Uh, some of these licenses can be grouped together and it can be made cheaper. Annually, for renewals, we need at least 200,000. That is quite expensive for a startup. Another thing, it's on the um, taxes. Uh, it's like getting a baby and expecting this baby to feed herself in less than a year. So we are requesting for monitoriums or um, a grace period to be able to get on our feet so that we can be able to pay taxes without default. And another thing, we are also having very good fabricators locally. We also need the fabricators to be uh, empowered financially so that we can be able to access machinery with, um, without really spending so much and they can also be able to give us credit terms. In terms of financing, we would like to see a grace period given to any facilities that is uh, extended to us in terms of loans for us to be able to stabilize before we start paying and if at least we can be up from six months and above because uh, manufacturing is quite requiring. So these are some of the things and also sensitizing um, uh, just the consumers on the Kenya, Buy Kenya, Build Kenya initiative so that we can also be able to support the products that we manufacture here because I believe we are competitive um, in terms of uh, packaging. We've really upped our game in branding and we are good to compete with the international market. A month ago I was in German and I looked at what is there and uh, the products that we are having out there internationally are as good as the products that we are manufacturing here and branding here. So we need support in those areas. Thank you. Thank you very much. On that note, we'd like to close our interactive session. Um, our hustlers, thank you so much for sharing uh, your challenges as well as your successes. Yes, Your Excellency. Uh, Esther uh, deserves a response. Yes. <laughs> because she has spoken to the heart of value addition and agro-processing and manufacturing. Yes. And it is a big component of how we are going to move our products up the value chain. We cannot continue to sell unprocessed, semi-processed, or poorly processed uh, goods in our market. We must up our game, and we must support people like Esther who venture into adding value to our products for local consumption and even for export. This is a subject we have discussed extensively, and that is the reason why I hired Moses Kuria. <laughs> Moses Kuria, can you respond to Esther? Come here. <laughs> On, just come to the podium there. Because uh, Esther wants to know how we are going to support them. What is your I, uh, KCD going to do? What is, uh, I mean, what, how are we? Thank you, Your Excellency. Esther, I hope you know the level of unemployment that there is in Kenya. So please don't add to it by getting me fired. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, because I don't get fired, Esther, I want to tell you that first, using our Kenya Industrial Research uh, Development Institute, we are now running up to 50 to 100 uh, clients, SME clients whom we are incubating there. From our Kenya industrial estate, we have another 50. We are now going to roll out these incubations to every county. Mm. And that is the basis that is the basis of our common user facilities. I have received already a lot of requests and people are offering land and I want to thank governors, Your Excellency, mm. 
governor of Elegeo Malakot has offered me land. Governor of Lekipi has offered me land. Governor of Nyeri, actually, where on Saturday I was giving out relief food in Kieni. We have agreed on 150 acres of land available from national government where we will put up our first pilot common user facility. So I want to tell Esther and all our SME manufacturers, at least you'll have a home. And let me also reiterate your excellency, we don't have a problem of money at all, at all, at all. I've had a discussion with banks. I've had a discussion with the World Bank and other development partners. The problem is what you have alluded to and what President Gatti has alluded to, that the bottom is not organized. We've left our SMEs out there like mushrooms in the world. And what we are, I'm going to do is to work with Esther and all the manu SME manufacturers, SME exporters, put them together and make them ready to receive money. Because money is one thing, and having uh, an, organize, an organized architecture that can be able to receive money is another thing. So Esther, I hope I've convinced you so you convince my boss. <laughs> And let me add here, when some counties are giving me land to do common user facilities, other counties are saying they want land, they want to encourage squatting on public land. And that difference, Your Excellency will start to show. I'm not in a mood to fight, I've fought enough in my life. <laughs> but you start to see the difference between progressive counties that want to be partner to us and Kenya Kwanza government in developing the manufacturing agenda, the export agenda for the benefits of our people. And counties which make a wrong turn and take us to the past where we were fighting and being antagonistic, you are going to see them start to lag behind others. When that happens, don't blame it on witchcraft. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you, Moses. I, just to add, I intentionally decided to um, have a ministry for SMEs and cooperatives. Because for a very long time, SMEs have been relegated to some department in some corner. And by so doing, sometimes they get forgotten. I now have a minister who wakes up and sleeps SMEs and cooperatives. <laughs> to do two things to make sure that SMEs are organized, to make sure that organized are made, uh, SMEs are made business ready, and to make sure that SMEs are made funding ready, so that we can catapult SMEs to the next level, where we create big corporations out of small SMEs. For the record, Equity Bank, that is telling us today they have $780 billion or something like that, was once upon a time a small SME somewhere in Moranga. Mm. So the small SMEs that you see here today, the outfit run by Esther and all the other small and micro enterprises here, have the capacity to be huge corporations if they get a hand up or a leg up and if they get the necessary support. And I want to promise you that that is why I am sitting here to give you assurance that we are going to work with you so that we can grow our SME sector to help us create wealth in our country. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Waziri Kuria, it seems your job is secure. <laughs> Yes, uh, Your Excellency, as we close, there is a question that I suppose from the floor, and uh, this is because of the issue of uh, climate change. Uh, in the world today, you'll find industrialists actually have exhausted their carbon credit. Now, in Kenya today, because of the drought, uh, we, we, we are trying to raise funds so that we can support certain areas. What is it that we can be able to do to utilize the open space that we have in this country so that we can be able to leverage on carbon credit? Precisely, uh, that's why I attended a, me a, a session in uh, COP27 where we were discussing about how to grow, how to expand, and how to make 
uh, carbon credit markets much more accessible, simpler, and carbon credit funding, not to fund intermediaries, but to find the actual people who do the real work on the ground. Um, you may want to know that uh, at the moment, 80% of all carbon credit financing end up with intermediaries, auditors, assessors, and the rest of them. The people who bear the brunt and who, the hard, who do the hard work of making sure that our environment is safe get the short end of the stick all the time. So in this particular arrangement, and that is why we were having this session, uh, shortly we are going to have a law that will govern matters to do with carbon credit so that we make sure that it is transparent and it is accessible to the people who actually should benefit from that carbon credit uh, regime. So um, the Ministry uh, of Agriculture and all the other ministries that are related, including forestry, we're going to put it together so that we can deal with the challenge of climate change and unlock financing that can help us mitigate and provide for adaptation mechanisms for the climate change effects that we are suffering as a nation. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, panelists. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we get to a close with that session, but we as the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry, we want to commit to you and to your government, Your Excellency, that we shall reorganize and we shall reorganize ourselves so that we can be able to partner with the Kenya Kwanzaa administration. Thank you very much. Terian. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Our panelists, you may now take your seats. And I'll hand over to Mr. Wanjohi. Uh, thank you very much. We may be seated, please. Uh, with the gracious permission of Your Excellency, just before I invite Cabinet Secretary, uh, I will request just one minute for Mr. Kiprono Kitoni and Mr. Kitone kindly, uh, just two minutes kindly. And after that, Minister Moses Kuria will take up the program. Um, thank you very much, Your Excellency, the President, of the Republic of Kenya, Your Excellency, the Deputy President, Chamber President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Um, allow me first to say that this is a proud moment for the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Mr. President, in 2007, during our AGM in Kakamega, which was scattered by the police at 11 a.m., if you came to the field after the event, there were sticks and stones. However, those sticks and stones did not break our bones, and I'm glad that we live to see this day today when we have an AGM that brings together the real practitioners of the private sector. <laughs> Mr. President, thank you. You walked this journey with us. Not once, when you were Deputy President, not once did we come to you to help the business community and you refused. You helped us when we were putting in our bid for the World Chamber Con Congress. I brought business people to you many times. And thank you, Mr. President, for keeping the faith. One day I came to your office, in your, at, the, at the DP's office, to tell you that we had given up the fight to try and take over the chamber. And I remember we had lunch in your office, and when you came into the uh, lunchroom, you said to me, wakora, me took over. And I told you I was actually coming to resign, but I couldn't tell you because you, were, you told me, go back and finish the job. <laughs> Let me just say quickly, Mr. President, that capital is a coward. Global capital seeks to come to Kenya. There's too much money in the world seeking a home where it can earn a return. What the business community globally and locally wants is predictability. 
is reliability, is seriousness in approach. And I think in the last one month since you took over, the business community has had more time with leadership than in the last 10 years. And if that's anything to go by, Mr. President, I think we are in for good times. Mr. President, finally, let me just say, we appreciate very much your choice of Moses Kuti as our cabinet secretary. <laughs> he's engaged, he's focused, he's resourceful. The other day, he told the, C the PS, some of the CEOs in his, co in his ministry, that our endesha come magari amira. And some of them wanted to resign, but I think we know we are in for a, hard, I mean, a time when we have to work as a country to lift and raise all the boats. Mr. President, I think what these people want is just an environment that is predictable. What these people want, and, and Mr. President, the KRA has been trying to dig too deep into our pockets. We need the chamber and such like bodies that can actually expand the tax base in order to allow you to fulfill the agenda of helping this country. Mr. President, you promised us 10 IPOs at the NSC. So I'll conclude by encouraging all of you SMEs, open CDS accounts, do not miss the IPOs. And finally, I commit to you, Mr. President, that we, the business leaders of this country, we will work single-handedly to make your agenda a success. Thank you very much, sir. Waziri Kaidle, thank you. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Your Excellency, the Deputy President, Chairman, President of the Chamber, the Board of uh, KNCCI, Ch Chamber members, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, I want to thank you yet again because of your continued commitment to our business and economic agenda. Your presence here today is yet another manifestation that what we told the people of this country, that the economy will be at the, at the heart of our administration, is actually becoming a reality. All your trips that you have made out there are in the names of business. Even when you went to COP27 for the environment, I hear you are more interested about carbon trading than about the environment, <laughs> because the economy is really at the heart of your administration. I do want to thank you. And even here locally, I want to apologize because these people, Kiprono, myself, Gatia, we've pulled you from one event to the other. We really apologize and we promise to do it again. <laughs> because we have to continue with this until people get to understand that really the economy is at the heart of this government. And I'm pleased to hear one of the young men who are presenting there. Uh, talk about how they are going to contribute to the NSSF. It means that message of yours is getting somewhere. It may appear difficult, but to Nashika. So just be patient with us. To Tailewa to Pole Pole. So just the same way you, you fed us on the bottom up agenda until now it has become a national anthem. The Hasla Fund has become a national anthem. So even the other things we are trying to do, like mobilizing savings and organizing the bottom to Tailewa. Like yourself, I'm a fan of the chamber. I've worked out there for a, close to a decade. And out there, when you buy a car, you, get, you need to get a stamp from the Chamber of Commerce. When you buy a cart, you need to get a stamp from the Chamber of Commerce. When I got my ch children, before I get them from the maternity, I need a stamp from the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> And I would want to see a situation whereby our chamber, because chambers are recognized all over the world, and having our chamber recognized, and I'm going to work with the, with the chamber here, with your permission, to actually see how, whether we can be able to entrench the chamber in some form of legislation, so that it's anchored somewhere within the law. <laughs> and to give it a framework through which your government and the chamber can be able to engage in a structured and formal manner. 15 years ago, 
uh, former president, your predecessor, Uru Kenyatta, when he became minister for trade, and I was his advisor. And he asked me, where are we going to start in this trade ministry where all the time somebody has to be out, up there in the air from one global meeting to the other? And at that time, the chamber was not attractive at all. There were fights every day. And I did one thing. I drafted for him a letter. We took it to the UNDP with a certain Mr. Charles Kahoto. I don't know whether Charles Kahoto is here. Yeah? And Mr. Mureu here. We drafted together 15 years ago. And we started the process of reforming. The UNDP supported us, gave us a grant of 50 million shillings to support the chamber. And then we had a, a Kofi Annan moment where we brought a gentleman called Gidere and one Kiprono Kitoni, and we reconciled them. And the rest is history, and that is why we are here, we are here today. <laughs> so we thank you, and I will tell you that within the chamber, Kama Ukoapa Ojapotea, there was only one small problem because the, 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 the mandate which we wrote for them did not include doing politics. And hapo katikati walipotelea wa kanza kufanya siyasa. Lakini wameniambia two things, that ata hii uchaguzi meisha, some of them was not supporting us. But they have told me two things. One, they have told me that they are glad that their side that they were supporting did not win. <laughs> and two, they have promised me that going forward, yeah, they will leave politics to politicians and work to build the chamber so that we can be able to work together. <laughs> and I want to promise them that even us, as Kenya Kwanza government, we are not going to ask of you to do politics on our behalf. We, all we are going to ask of you is please manage business, help the SMEs, help to grow our exports, help to grow our manufacturing, our politics we can do for ourselves. <laughs> the project of reforming the chamber that uh, Trademark East Africa is undertaking to be able to organize the bottom is a shared agenda with our government. My ministry is involved in that particular initiative. I want to thank Trademark East Africa who are here, Ahmed Farah, we've had many meetings, uh, Mr. Angati, and I want to say that that project has got the full support of the government of Kenya to reform, to register every SME, because we keep on arguing. The other day, we had having a meeting with yourself, Your Excellency, with KRA, and one, Dr. David D, uh, said we have got four million SMEs, but the enterprises registered for VAT are close to 300,000. And I want to see a situation whereby, after we are done with this project of digitization of the chamber, we actually donate that list and become an agent, a partner of KRA because we are going to do everything possible to improve the business environment. We are going to go to every length to support manufacturing, create common user facilities, uh, merge our licenses regime, but also we want the chamber to be our partner in matters of tax collection. And it's not tax collection by force. We want to move to a regime of voluntary tax uh, collection. And they have told me that they have no problem paying taxes. The only problem is that we let the taxes pile up, pile up, pile up. Mbaka ziku ya kulipa inakuwa sasa story ingine. So under that program, we are also going to work on a situation whereby every day, KRA will be going home with their money and leaving the businessman with, their, with his money. So because when it is when the tax is paid in store installment every day, what we are calling the tax at source, and do it on a voluntary basis, then we are going to meet each other and be friends. Your Excellency, we are we are successfully piloted that in the betting industry uh, for the last two weeks. Every day, one the, the company that is in that pilot scheme, every day they are going home happy because KRE has been collecting its taxes daily basis real time, and they have been doing their business. And the betting industry is telling me that they are happy now because they are sure hakuna mutu watawakimbiza. So we want to extend that and work with these uh, members of the chamber so that we can be able to, to, to reform that. Export-led growth is another of our um, uh, core areas as Kenya Kwanza government. And as I've said, we are going to have common user facilities, not just for manufacturing, but for export uh, within our counties. But even further than that, and I want to say, announce further what we announced yesterday when we met President Ramaphosa, that we are going to build warehouses and common user facilities, not just in our counties, but also in our key markets. We are going to build uh, warehouses in Johannesburg, in Cape Town, 
Just this morning, I had a wonderful meeting with our ambassador in DRC, who, who is here. So we are building three-way houses, one in Kinshasa, one in Goma, and one in Mumbashi. What that means, even if you don't know any customer in DRC, just come to our warehouses, place your goods there, using e-commerce and other uh, tec te techniques, we are going to sell on your behalf and just remit money to you. You don't need to know anyone. And we are, in our first phase, we are going to also to extend that to, to Dubai and also to, to, to the UAE. Your Excellency, uh, I have seen our friends from the stock market is here, are here and I, want to, I don't want to lose that opportunity by saying one, we want to have a new conversation. The old conversation based on borrowing, based on debt, based on budget deficit belong to the old Kenya. I have a new passport I'm giving these people and Katia was among the first people to receive it. What we are calling the new passport. The new passport to a new conversation based on opportunities, based on investment, based on trade, and based on shared prosperity. I'm not saying that debts are not good. I've seen bankers here and don't want to be blacklisted. But we are saying at the same time, let's have a new conversation. And I'm discussing with the chamber how they are going to join our common investment pool for the private sector, what we are calling Sanduku, uh, for partnering on our affordable housing and, and other projects. We are going, we have agreed with the Nairobi Stock Exchange that they will take up our, uh, on our behalf our commodities exchange so that uh, partnering with the Kenya National Trading Corporation, we can be able now to start trading goods uh, on the NSC the same way that the shares are being treated, and that will lead to a very efficient market. Finally, Your Excellency, because you have done so much for us, we have a gift for you today. And that gift, which these people know very well, uh, we have a, a facility known as the Joint Loans Board, and most of these people are partakers of that Joint Loans Board. The Joint Loans Board, so far, uh, has lent, we have got close to a billion shilling out there and we are holding their titles, their driving licenses. I want to return them to them. In return, they will join the Hustlers Fund. So when you are counting your customers for the Hustlers Fund, count that already you have got one billion shillings out there which these people will come and convert. And in addition to that, and I've discussed this with my colleague, uh, Simon Cherugui, uh, we have got a quarter of a billion shillings that has not been dispensed so that money, I've just told by peers, by close of business, when we have got the regulatory framework, must be transferred to the hazardous fund. So not starting the hazardous fund, we have no excuse now. Pesa <laughs> uh, And also, uh, the, 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 the trade officers who are dealing with this uh, joint loans board are going to be retrained on dispensing the hazardous fund. And we are donating to uh, Simon Chirugui two trade officers in every county. Each county will have two trade officers already they are on government payroll and they'll be the nucleus of the people who will be working with the chamber and with our SMEs to give them the education and the training they require to make the Hasra fund a success. Nowadays, everybody's talking about the Hasra fund, including very big manufacturers, very big people who I didn't even know that they, they know that Hasra exists. But because of your continuous education, everybody is sing, singing the same song of the Hasra, and now because of our donation, we can be able to kick off. And with those very, very, very few words, let me take this opportunity to invite my good friend, my boss, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya, Honorable Gadiga Shagwa, to address and invite the President. Thank you very much. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Commander-in-Chief of our Defense Forces, Dr. William Ruto, C.S. Moses Courier, the leadership of the National Chamber in Commerce. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. good morning. I'm happy and delighted to be here to accompany my boss in a forum where his heart is. I had different engagements, but last night he asked me to accompany him here because he wants witnesses around him, as we turn around the economy of this country. And uh, Your Excellency, you have instructed those of us who summoned you that you want a complete turnaround 
of the work ethics in this great republic. And you have told us so many times, and we have heard, that you want every leader who serves under you to keep time so that we save time and make money. You have told us that it's unacceptable in your government for any leader who serves under you to keep the business community waiting even for five minutes. And that is why we, are, we were here on time because that is the way things are being done in this country. Your Excellency, you have indicated, and rightly so, that your administration has brought a new management style of continuous engagement with stakeholders. And that is why for the last one month, you have engaged the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. You are here today. You are the Nairobi Securities Exchange. And you have created time for the creators of wealth. These people, Your Excellency, to be truthful, had been incited against us. They were told we are bad people. <laughs> that we don't mean well for business. That we only care about the hustlers. They even went ahead to threaten them that we can take away their wealth and the balance we give it to the hustlers. These people now know that we are the people they needed around this country. <laughs> the problem of Kenya for many years is just one. Professors of political science, the greatest economists, can write many things about the problems of Kenya. The problem of Kenya has been one of leadership. And you people know, for your companies to succeed, it must start with the CEO. If you get it right at that level, you are good. True or false? What Kenya needed was a CEO who knows what he's doing, who has time, who has the energy, who has the passion, and who is willing to be a team leader of this great country. And I want to say, much as you people were incited against us, and you almost got in lost. The ordinary Kenyan knew the kind of leadership this country needed. But be as it may, be as it may, from where I sit, listening to the president every day, his leadership revolves around investors, entrepreneurs, the business people, and creating the right environment for business to thrive and for creating wealth. Never again in this country, under the Ruto administration, will government ever criminalize enterprise because it almost brought this country to a halt. Where people who have no idea about business, people who have no idea about investment, people who have no idea about banking, they were let loose all over the economy and almost brought this country to a halt. That will not happen again. Finally, Your Excellency, we are having a serious crisis because of the adverse effects of climate change. 4.3 million Kenyans are facing starvation. 2.5 million herds of cattle are dead. There is danger to wipe out our wildlife. And we are having meetings to look for short-term solutions, mid-term and long-term. I want to appeal to all of you to give a hand to the people of Kenya. Tomorrow we have an engagement with our development partners and our business leaders. And I'll extend an invitation to about 10 people from the chamber to represent you so that we agree first on the short-term interventions, which is to mobilize money and food for the people of Kenya. When your leaders come back to you, I want to appeal to you with a lot of humility. If you can afford 100,000, a million shillings, two million, three million, whatever you can, please let's put the resources together so that we join our development partners because charity begins at home. Even as we talk to the foreigners to assist us, we must have a local effort. 
So when that appeal comes, please give us whatever you can in terms of cash, in terms of food, through the Red Cross and other mechanisms that we shall create that are credible and transparent so that we save life. It will be unfortunate if we lost a single life of a Kenyan when you have some little money somewhere that you can be able to put to that use. And you business people, because of the president's commitment to turn around the economy and make business thrive, he gave you the best. Moses Kuria, make use of him. Make use of him. He, had, he has energy, he has a passion, he has a drive. And this guy, Moses Kuria, was misunderstood. He had too much energy and nobody was using him. So he had to do other things to keep busy. <laughs> the president has now deployed him appropriately and positively. So please make use of him. Finally, Mimi Sitaki ni haribu ya mkutano, lakini ni mina uliza suwari moja. Ama ni wacha ni taharibu. Eh? Ni ulize? Mutanijibu? Sasa nyinyi? Surely. Even if you believed that we are useless, the way you had been told, na hiyo uongo yote na vitina, na propaganda, ati sisi tutaharibu biashara, tutapeleka mahasula nini nini. Wale walikuwa na muambia, the alternative they were giving you to say me ukweli, hao wakiweza kuamuka mapema kuja kwa imu kutano? Tuambia ni ukweli. Surely, you know? You know, let, let, let's be truthful. So, hata nyinyi, hata nyinyi muli tuangusha. Because surely, the way the economy of this country is, you need somebody even with energy. Energy, leave alone other things. Energy to do the right thing and to, to make sure that we, we get moving. So another day, join the people of Kenya in making the right decision. With those very many remarks, it's now my privilege to present to you a great man whom we have given the responsibility to turn around the economy of this country, President William Samoe Ruto. You are president. Asante Nisana, let's take our seats. Thank you very much. Um, and thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy President, for those kind remarks. Um, the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and Industry Leadership, uh, Minister President, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, this round table aims to shed more light, clear more pathways, and generate solutions that enable our business community engage more robustly in sustainable, incremental, and mutually beneficial exchange. We will focus mainly on the digital and creative economy, manufacturing, business environment, climate change, and agriculture. It will become clear that these issues align with the urgent deliverables set out in a transformation of our country. Therefore, they resonate powerfully with our government's agenda. Stakeholders are clear, listening to them most of this morning, that they want to see the digitization and automation of transactions in order to take more economic activities to the domain of the digital economy. Towards this end, export documents will be digitized to reduce transaction costs, and business information will also be digitized and consolidated in an integrated portal. And Moses Kuria here has the brief on how to go about it. There is also a strong request to reduce tariffs on digital products, not only to lower cost, but also increase incentives for developers, as well as traders and consumers. And I listened to Magdalene, she spoke so passionately about that. And to strengthen the sector through education, skills, and training, we shall have a strong program to support the establishment of innovation hubs for the development of skills, 
talent and incubation of startups and the whole array of um, uh, services and uh, um, funding uh, instruments from uh, funding startups to making sure that we have venture capital so that we can do more research and more um, trials of what works. We will also deepen the teaching of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and entrench an apprenticeship framework in the education curriculum. I have already instructed the ministry in the Tibet sector to make sure that our Tibets are made technology compliant and more apprenticeship and more industrial training and industrial attachment is carried out as a means of equipping our young people with the skills that can make them job creators. The truth is that we are living in the digital age and e-commerce is a big part of our economic reality. Consequently, it is important that we empower small businesses to thrive in the online marketplace. Our first order of business is to develop a policy framework to protect and support youth in their creative economy. This entails facilitation and capacity building of mainly youth-owned MSMEs. And as I said earlier, that is precisely why I pronounce myself on the creative economy under the Ministry of ICT and having a standalone ministry for SMEs because this is the sector that will turn around, in my respectful view, our economy. The second related agenda is the urgent need to lay down MSME-friendly consumer protection and intellectual property frameworks. Through collaboration with county governments, we also intend to refurbish and equip existing facilities. And I'm grateful that many county governments are now volunteering facilities for us to work together with them so that we can modernize uh, facilities which were, have been neglected or degraded into modern recreational centers and where youth can train, can learn, practice, and generate incomes from showcasing their talent. As it pertains to manufacturing, MSMEs must be supported to participate in supply and value chains through establishment of processing plants and common shared facilities. The cost of production must also be lowered significantly through lower energy and input costs as and a more supportive uh, tax regime. As I have said, our tea, we are selling 95% of our tea in a semi-processed uh, state. And I have said that we are going to have a common user facility in Mombasa at the Dongokudu complex so that we can begin the journey to add value to all our teas, create jobs, and access better value for our farmers. It's also essential to develop a sound and competitive industrial knowledge base by entrenching research and development of facilities and training SMEs on appropriate technology, new and cost-effective machinery, as was said, uh, by my good friend uh, from the Juakali sector, that indeed we can develop appropriate, effective machinery locally working with our Juakali sector. This is especially urgent in the agricultural sector, which can unlock tremendous new potential merely by deepening technology penetration. Finally, it is time to upgrade current markets to serve as modern manufacturing centers, complete with shared facilities for small businesses to enable them to produce consistently at competitive rates. And I have um, committed that we are going to modernize our markets countrywide, starting with 20 markets in the city of Nairobi, to be able to ensure that our business people have habitable 
decent, healthy environment to carry out uh, their business. And I confirm that there exist promising opportunities for the private sector to invest in key development projects in various sectors under the PPP model, and we will deliberately create opportunities for the private sector to tap into key development projects through this partnership. A case in point is our housing program. We have said deliberately that 40% of all our investments and work under the affordable housing plan will be done by micro and small enterprises in the Juakali sector and other sectors. And already they have demonstrated capacity to do it. In one project alone in Kibra, the, uh, the Juakali sector will take 40% of the cost of that project by doing doors, windows, hinges, and all the other products. And we have already aligned them with the TVET so that they can be able to improve the quality of their uh, product. Because of all these activities we are looking forward to, and it will be essential to assure all our stakeholders of consistency and integrity in the market, as was said ably by Kiprono here. I have just returned from COP27 at Sharm el-Sheikh in Egypt where I marketed Kenya's green credentials. Apart from our clean power generation from hydro, geothermal, wind, and solar, we are aiming to secure a global leadership position in carbon adaptation through an unprecedented drive to grow 15 billion trees in the next decade. And I look forward to the partnership of the chamber in this endeavor. We also have the intention of following through with our e-mobility and renewable energy, as I mentioned to the Juakali here, that we will work with them on e-mobility to change, to refabricate all our e-mobility um, tools so that we can be able to transit from um, dirty energy. In addition, we will invest in constructing shared solar-powered cold storage units to reduce post-harvest losses, increase agricultural productivity, and protect farm incomes. Unlocking the true potential of MSMEs in our economy demands that we all collaborate with the private sector. Working together, we will create new opportunities that will transform our economy and our country, and I want to ask all the players working together, synergized, and uh, we will provide the necessary space for all of us to contribute our ideas, and we believe that always a good idea should be able to give way to a better idea. That's how we can move together in unison. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank all of you for finding time for this engagement. I value this engagement, and I look forward to many more as we look into the future. Tomorrow, I will be having another engagement with our pension schemes, the people who decide on our savings, again, to be able to work with them to build our savings culture, to secure our present with investments, and to secure our future with pensions. Again, I look forward, as Moses said, working with you to make it easy for business to pay taxes, to make it um, convenient for business to pay taxes. We will not engage in the business of harassment of our business people to pay taxes. We want to make paying taxes seamless, convenient, and easy for business because that is how we are going to create the necessary partnership that will enable us to deliver public goods using taxes and create an environment for the private sector to create wealth 
and provide the resources for us to grow our economy and develop our country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. The Chamber would wish Your Excellency to present Your Excellency with a gift as a memento for this great occasion. Niombe Tulete requests the Chamber President, First Vice President, Second Vice President, Cabinet Secretary Moses Kuria to join us, and Your Excellency, the, Vice, the Deputy President, to join us as we present this gift to His Excellency, the President, the African Eagle soaring high in the skies like our businesses and like Kenya will soar high. There we have it, uh, a gift to His Excellency the President. Uh, they also present some copy of the books by the Chamber of Marcel. Uh, they also present the books to Your Excellency, as I also invite the board after this to join for one photo opportunity. The board, we move quickly to the back so that we have a photo opportunity with His Excellency the President. Kindly, the board members, quickly. Uh, the board. There we have it, a photo of His Excellency the President, His Excellency the Deputy President, and the leadership of the Chamber. Asante, I request all of us now to retreat, and we'll be up studying for the National Anthem. We allow His Excellency the President uh, to take the salute for the National Anthem, and then we allow His Excellency the President to leave at his pleasure. The National Anthem, Your Excellency. We all remain up studying as His Excellency the President leaves at his pleasure. Kindly, our process continues. We allow His Excellency to leave at his pleasure. We remain up studying. 